Howdy folks, well another edition of Fish with Uncle Philster. This time I thought I'd do a little bit of a tutorial on the Caro or Carolina rig. Now there's a couple of forms of this. We've got the original Carolina rig which is used for fishing across the bottom and it was first invented for fishing for largemouth bass over in the States. And then we've got the Japanese refinement of that which is the Caro. Now we'll start off with the Carolina rig where if you have a search around on the internet and find out tutorials about it and stuff you'll see that it usually mentions using a bullet weight like this which it's basically used because it's a very common thing used in lure fishing over in America and when it's set up it's very snag resistant just because of the profile of the bullet weight and see that they're dome shaped on the back as well and that's for fitting over the nose of um, jelly worms and other soft lures which I can show in another video but the rig also works just as well if you're using just a standard bullet lead here Just something like a, a four gram, can't remember the exact weight. And if you can't get hold of either of these two, you can use a barrel lead. This will be a bit more snag resistant than the normal round bullet, drill bullet there. And say it's probably going to be around about the same as the nose cone bullet weight. Use whichever one you prefer. And the difference between this and the Japanese refinement and the Caro's is that these ones are used primarily for fishing on the bottom, whereas these ones are used for fishing throughout the water column. You can use these in deep water, but you do have to fish them a lot faster than you fish these. Now you can go out and buy Caro's. Um, there are various websites and they all have a variant sink rate. Let's see on the back, these just happen to be ticked ones. That we've got three different grades, the sink at different rates and a different angle, um, which is very useful if you're trying to target a particular depth where fish are located at. And also if you want to try and make a bit scoop underneath. A bit of overhanging structure. And they also do a mini one. Um, it, this scale goes, you know, right up. And this is an eight gram one. This is three and a half gram one. So if you LRF fishing, um, obviously fish to the the weight rating of your rod. And yeah, there's a little bit of leeway between if you can go over it or not. But you can also scale it right up. In, in freshwater fishing for a long time, for trout over on the continent, there are these. Uh, they used to be really hard to get hold of bombarders. Um, sorry, really hard to get hold of caros over here. Um, sometimes have to import them from Japan, and then a couple of shops over in the UK started stocking them. Like um, art fishing, sell them, and Mister Fish. But other than that, there are these which are bombarder or spirulino. There's a few different names on them depending on which country you're in. Very very similar method. Uh, these are usually made out of solid acrylic or you can get them made out of like balsa and stuff uh, with a weight in and again they sink at different rates. You can get fast sink, slow sink. This happens to be a slow sink. Um, you can get semi sinking which kind of sit on the top. And you can actually get floating ones as well, so you can work a lure across the top. They used a lot for trout fishing. Some of seem to have taken a chip out of this one, but these ones are actually interchangeable. So you can just use the stem and slide on another one. And you can get them right up to 40, 50 grams if you're fishing for bass. Very similar to the old bulldoze method of using a bubble float, only using something solid like this. 
and you know 40 50 grams whack it out for so what we'll do is show the different way to set it up now uh, you can fish it with mono or braid so got here this is be pretty hard to see this is some 10 pound power pro white power pro it's about 0.15 or something of a millimeter and got that tight as some four pound fluorocarbon use fluoro or mono this is just a, a leader because the caro and whichever bullet weight system you use slide up and down the line and it causes abrasion which will snag on the braid a bit hot a bit more and it can also start freeing it up so we use the bit of mono or fluorocarbon because it slides on that a bit easier now you want about 30 centimeters or so of this and first of all I'll set it up just to show you the way with the Carolina rig with a bullet weight you I'll just mention whichever knot you use for attaching braid to mono it doesn't matter this happens to be an all bright knot whether you use a um, FG knot or Yucatan doesn't really matter so take the bullet weight and then thread it on the line so the pointed end is pointing up the main line towards the rod because you're going to be I know it's not good aerodynamically for casting out but you're going to be retrieving it this way through a snag and then we want a bead and um, hard beads are what's recommended universally uh, use hard plastic or glass a lot of people recommend glass or say like a, a brass weight like, because it's hard and they think that the clicking sound of the weight hitting against the bead attracts fish jury's out on that one for me I think yeah it can attract fish but I don't think it's conclusive whether it does or not I'm just using a little hard glow bead here just because it shows up better on camera then thread that on the line you see that it sits up inside like that and it'll protect your knot now that you've got the bead on next thing you want to tie on is a swivel now you want to use a fairly small swivel so it's unobtrusive and so the fish don't hit the swivel instead of the lure and there's also um, a weight issue as well um, for when you cast into reduced tangles uh, you want the weight or the caro free running on the line so there's less resistance for a take for a fish and also so we feel the take from the fish a lot easier so a, a solid tip rod is really good in that respect when you're fishing the Caro or Carolina rig method. You can upscale and downscale the rig as much as you want, say if you are fishing for bass or uh, any other larger fish, um, cold fish not take quite easily. Um, you can use a larger swivel you know if you need that extra bit of strength. But usually fairly small swivel, especially when you're LRF fishing, this is like a size 18 colnic swivel. Um, even use them down to 22, 24 and then after the swivel we want to tie uh, the actual hook length leader which can be anywhere from about 30 centimeters up to about 90 centimeters any more than about 90 you tend to lose a lot of control over the lure um, and it's also hard to cast especially when using the, the shorter rods in lure fishing. I found that in but places where there's a lot of current like say you're fishing in an estuary and there's a fairly strong current flowing through the river that if you're using a long leader it tends to float up a bit and it kind of like hovers around about six to eight inches you know about 15 to 20 centimeters 
above the bottom so it's right in the, the eyesight zone for a lot of fish especially things like flounder and they will take that quite aggressively I've had some uh, really nice sized flounder fish in that method you know like 40 plus centimeters um, and the Carolina version we use a plain hook pretty much all the time you don't use a jig head because the extra weight will pull it down into any snags that might be around on the bottom you can use an offset hook and fish it weedless if you want obviously depending on how many snags and that are around where you're fishing and again you can upscale it to a wide gape a much heavier gauge wire hook depending on snags and whatever kind of cover and the species of fish that you're fishing for use any kind of lure you want something like a little grub like this or even a little pintail lure like this one here or something like these jacko nails which are like a worm um, uh, parasome things like the HTO nightworm are really good I find those really good when fishing a carol and because they kind of pulse in the water as they're moving through the water column and a lot of really good hits on those fishing it that way or you can fish it with a lure with a little ball on the end like these little shirasus but with a, a carol rig I get set up exactly the same way with you've got the carol sliding on the line so that's free running then a bead then a swivel and again the hook length length of leader again similar size about 45 to 60 centimeters is a good place to start so that's about one and a half to two feet but in this one we use a jig head usually this happened to be the last one of these little rock bait ones and I've got some little shirasus here which fit perfectly with the shirasu lure but we only want to use ones about half a gram and less so like 0 0.5, 0 0.3 gram, 0 0.2 gram somewhere around that the reason we don't use a bare hook is because we want a little bit of weight so that the lure actually goes in front of the carrow when we cast and when it's sinking through the water and when we're working it otherwise you could end up with it actually fishing behind where the carrow is and we don't want it like that we want the lure fishing in front of the carrow so kind of fishing like that but obviously not in a mess on a desk and um, you can use a bare hook if I just show you here from the Carolina rig uh, we'll stick this lure on it's not grow up so it's not on very straight this one but it doesn't matter so fishing the bare hook but what we do is we add a small shot and just nip it on just above the hook like that and that gives the same effect as using the jig head so we're fishing it the same way so that it works in front of the carol rather than the risk of it working behind and that's pretty much how you set it up um, one thing to bear in mind is if you buy some bombardas or spirulinos that they're actually made for fishing in fresh water not in the sea and because salt water is a lot more dense than fresh water 
you've got to take that um, into consideration like this is a slow sink one and they say it's a very slow sink I mean he's talking about like five or six seconds per foot for this to sink if you buy some of the semi sinking ones like I did they actually float in the sea fine if I was going fishing in fresh water and they would be very slow sinking or just work just under the surface but they were no good for in the sea because they floated unless like say it was you were fishing for things on the surface you know like working a low across the top so it would have its uses that way but just bear that in mind though because you might be a bit disappointed if you buy a load of uh, bombarders and find out that they all float so for that reason unless you get the fast sink ones the fast sink will be like a medium sink and see um, try and get a caro if you can they are a little bit more expensive but they are worth the money and they do have like the different sink rates and stuff I think that pretty much covers it um, other than the technique which is usually jigging and hopping what you're using on the bottom is pretty much what you're using throughout the water column and because of the water resistance on the caro you have the line flowing through and you'll actually feel the caro hit up against the swivel as it sinks back through and then you usually get a take on the pause I'll try and show that in another video I think or maybe tag it onto this general technique is like this when you cast out maintain a tight line as it sinks through the water because quite often you'll get a take on the drop and if you have a, a slack line the take won't register unless it's really vicious and as you can see here I'm just twitching it and reeling in as I lower the rod to maintain a tight line so I'll always feel a bite and as you can see here you can pause it like I am now and letting it sink back down to the level that I want to work at particularly if you're up high where the lure will actually rise up through the water and you'll be out of the, the fish zone then uh, the fish where I am actually quite low in the water today so I'm letting the lure get back down and you can vary the size of the twitches, the speed of the twitches, the speed of the pauses, like the amount of time you let it sink down. Anything you want to do, particularly if you're using something like the Carolina, where you're fishing across the bottom, you can drag it across the bottom and disturb sand or mud, which will attract things like flounder or dabs or place. Uh, you can twitch it and let the lure waft up and then gradually flutter back down towards the bottom and you'll often get a take as it just comes to settle down on the bottom again uh, you can hop it over rocks and everything just mix it up and find out what works where you're fishing and what you're actually fishing for some fish like the lure when it's fairly static and some like it work fast you can rip it through the water if you want and I've had fish doing it that way um, but on the drop like I say is usually a good one you can see this one it's a bit blurry because the glare was interfering with the focus of the camera and it's just working the lure here over the top of kelp and rocks that go about 20 or so metres out from the pier and had a little coal fish or safe or even pollock if you live in America in my area they're known as a coley there's lots of fairly small coleys like this in the sea around where I live this was taken on a Electronics Nightworm on the exact rig that I showed in the video. There we go, lovely little fish. Fight pretty hard for the size as well. I actually had two mackerel on this session, but unfortunately didn't get them um, recorded because for some reason they didn't save. Missed the fight and everything. And on a LRF rod, it's one hell of a scrap. So you've got another little coolie here. Again, same rig. And in the next bit, I'll show you the plain hook with just a split shot. There we go. Another little coolie. So here we have the small coal fish that I took on the same session using a bear hook this time with a small split shot squeeze just above it and a section of pink powery somi as the lure. 
get lots of them around the pier this time of year and they're quite easy to catch like this and I'll show you a few other fish that you can expect to catch amongst many others including fish in fresh water not just sea um, this is mackerel I didn't actually get the film footage of taken on the chop really slamming it with hard crack and fight and then pollock as well they take their carol rake quite easily another tronic nightworm exactly the same rake as I was using in the early video and here we have lawn so great a sand eel again on the same rig only I'm using a shirasu jig head and a shirasu lua this time anything works though for those lots of them and on a carolina rig fished across the bottom this kraken flounder which is about 41 centimeters I think it was and another one here both taken on a bear hook with um, parisome pink again dragged and hopped across the bottom that's a lot I'll see you next time